Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about black holes from a relatively practical perspective. We're going to discuss a study by a famous scientist David Kipling who actually proposes using black holes as a kind of a mechanism for travel. Let's discuss what exactly he's proposing and simulate it using Space Engine and Universe Sandbox. Welcome to What The Man. So a few years ago, scientists proposed using super large lasers and also tiny, tiny probes um, that are propelled by these lasers that you see on the screen right now to try to send these objects to um, a nearby star system known as Proxima Centauri. This is actually still in planning and it's known as uh, Project Starshot. I've talked about this a few months ago and um, it's still... Um, a viable way for us to get to a nearby solar system but the problem with this is that if you do the math behind the actual mass that you could potentially propel using the, these lasers um, it's actually really tiny you would never be able to send anything like for example a space shuttle using this technique as a matter of fact uh, David Kipling uh, calculates the total required energy to send something as large as let's say a small spacecraft to this location at a speed of about 20 percent of the speed of light just like proposed in this, uh, project starshot and unfortunately you would require something like several times the amount of energy produced by the entire planet per year so it's not very practical we would not be able to send an actual um, spacecraft there so instead he did a little bit of math and published a paper known as the Halo Drive. So he proposes the idea for black hole propulsion. Now, it's obviously not something we can create just now. As a matter of fact, we don't really have the technology for this just yet, for creating um, a spacecraft or really getting to any black holes for this particular propulsion. But I still wanted to talk about the main principles because they are scientifically sound and they actually might inspire the future generation of explorers to try to um, create something like that. So how exactly does the halo drive work? Now, in a sense, it's actually based on the idea of a slingshot maneuver, and I'm going to demonstrate to you how this works. This is the Voyager probe back in 1979, and it's going to be passing by Jupiter and getting what's known as a slingshot maneuver. Just watch this part right here of the highest part of the orbit of the probe, and you can see that it's actually increasing because Jupiter is giving Voyager a kick out of the solar system. So this uh, is how gravitational slingshot maneuver works. And technically, you can use something like a neutron star or a black hole for this as well. The only problem is that with a black hole or a neutron star, if you were to pass that close to it, it would most likely tear the spacecraft apart. The tidal effects around neutron stars and black holes are just a little bit too high. Now, this idea was kind of unofficially used in uh, Interstellar. There's actually a proposition by the main character to try to use a slingshot maneuver around neutron star to try to decrease the... Um, orbit around a black hole, but unfortunately it wasn't really realistic. So instead, we can actually use another interesting phenomenon that black holes possess um, that could potentially create, well, in a sense, infinite energy. Now, to explain this, first let's take a look at this little sketch directly from the paper. And here, uh, using the Millennium Falcon, we can actually kind of see what's happening. So the spacecraft fires a laser and the laser beam goes around the black hole, comes back into the spacecraft and actually returns with a lot more energy than it left with. And it just so happens that the science and the math behind this is quite sound. Now, this is a really simplified version of this, but you could technically fire a low energy laser beam and receive a much higher energy laser beam because as it travels around the black hole, it absorbs a little bit of energy if you fire it at just the right location. Now, if you've watched my videos about black holes previously, you know that um, black holes have various regions around them, and one of them somewhere right here, a little bit away from the event horizon, but not quite where you would have an accretion disk, is actually an orbit where light could actually orbit around a black hole and never fall into it. And there's actually a spot here where if you were to fire an actual laser, it would then come back to you. 
it would actually just go around the black hole and come back where it came from. But here's the thing though. If it's a binary black hole, you could technically steal some of their energy, their gravitational energy, and absorb it into the actual laser. But more so, if this black hole spins really fast, and a lot of black holes do spin because they come from stars that initially spin as well, you could basically have this laser move around the black hole and absorb some of the energy from the spin itself, while then returning to the craft and giving some of that energy to the craft itself. So it's actually a very generally scientifically accurate proposal on how you could give your spacecraft energy to boost itself into um, higher orbit or basically anywhere into space. Now this effect depends on something called frame dragging, which is uh, what the black hole here will create. In other words, if you were to just launch an object here, it would get slingshot by the frame dragging effect from the spinning black hole and get higher acceleration. But because the light moves with a constant speed, instead of getting more speed, it actually gets more energy. Now for this to work, we actually do need some really, really precise lasers. So a lot of modern lasers will probably not really do a good job just yet. So here you want to have a really precise laser, you want to point it at a very specific location around the black hole, and then you want to make sure that when it's received back, you don't really lose any energy to um, a laser that suddenly became too large. So in other words, you want to actually emit a laser in such a way that by the time it comes back to you, it brings back energy instead of actually taking away energy from your craft. And uh, this will also depend with the distance from the black hole. The farther away you are, the more likely the laser will start dispersing more and more. The beam will actually increase in size, thus actually creating a bit of a problem. So this will not really work at ridiculously far distances, meaning that you actually have to accelerate using this technique really fast. And this might actually require accelerations that are much higher than 1G. As a matter of fact, um, you might need to move really, really fast and have really high acceleration. In other words, people might not really be able to survive this unless they're in some sort of a stasis or uh, some kind of um, cryogenic sleep that prevents them from essentially breaking apart. And there are obviously a lot of other problems, like for example, what if the laser energy gets absorbed by the material around the black hole? Or what if you start moving so fast that uh, the actual energy returned to you is no longer enough? So there's a lot of um, concerns, but overall though, this technique could potentially create an ability for us to travel really, really fast using nothing but black holes and literally conserve all of our energy. There's um, energy that's being stolen from the black holes, but the ship itself is not really using up anything. And what's even cooler is that we could potentially even create a kind of a halo network. Essentially, an entire network of various black holes around the galaxy that we could use to propel ourselves or to um, slow down next to using this really interesting technique. Now, it's obviously way, way far from what we can actually achieve right now, but the theory behind it and the science behind it is absolutely solid. And especially with the recent release of the black hole picture, we now have a confirmation for most major theories um, that were predicted earlier in regards to black holes. So we know that this particular idea could definitely work. And with current estimates putting the number of black holes in the Milky Way at around 100 million, it means that we could actually create really, really interesting pathways across the galaxy using these unusual but somewhat cool black hole traveling nodes. Now, all in all, it's a brilliant theory, but of course, um, when it comes to actual practical application, it doesn't uh, yet have any solutions. Specifically because the nearest black hole that we are aware of is really far away. It's like thousands of light years away from us. And the nearest, statistically speaking, black hole is about maybe 40 to 50 light years away from us, based on the assumption that there is 100 million black holes out there. So it would still mean that we have to somehow travel that distance to get here to then use the power of a black hole to accelerate more. So there's still a lot of kind of hurdles we have to try to overcome. But it's definitely worth it because one day we might be able to become an intergalactic species and without this halo travel and halo network, we might not really be able to do it efficiently. 
because potentially black holes can create a tremendous amount of energy, energy that we would not be able to provide or create otherwise. So even having a planet here that's using this laser technique to try to create free energy would be a very viable solution to producing energy without any kind of expenditure. So it's definitely something we need to explore one day once we're able to actually get to at least one of these black holes. But until then, I guess we need to first come up with a technique to try to escape our own solar system. So, baby steps, right? Anyway, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learn a little bit more about black holes from this video. And subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.